What's up, my boys? Today we are gonna do something a little different. We are gonna look at George Dunnett, the most likable person ever. He made like one of the most viral videos of converting an abandoned stone house into a fully livable stone house. And today we're gonna see how he did it because we are dreaming of renovating a tiny little stone house here on Madeira Island where we live. We just made a video where we actually go to this stone house and that stone house is very similar to this stone house. So we were very much inspired by this video and when we talked about how much it would cost to renovate this stone house that we're looking at, if we wanna do it super luxurious, high end, it would be around 200,000 euros in addition to the 50,000 euros that the stone house costs. So what if we approach this tiny house from a more budget-friendly angle? In my village, there's a little lane called the cobbles, which I walk up every day. And on the cobbles, there are three abandoned or empty buildings. First of all, there's this tiny building. I don't know who owns it and I don't know what's inside. So honestly, it's just a bit of a mystery. What a nice area. The next building is this little cottage. You know, I could almost live in Scotland. I think it's in Scotland. You I could. Look you, how, look. We just had one day of rain yesterday and you <laughs> was in the couch crying like a baby. Oh. I wish we built all houses out of stones. Finally, we have this building here, which was pretty much abandoned. It was being used for storage, but it was also looking very old and very tired, and no one had lived in it for way over 50 years. So cute. It's very cute. It looks like a garage, though. And every time I walked past it, I thought it would be nice to turn it into a proper house. So in October 2020, I bought it. In this video, I'm going to show you the process of turning this abandoned building into my first home. I hope you enjoy. After the previous owner had cleared everything out of the building, this is what I was left with. The walls were looking pretty rough, the floor needed sorted, there was a little bit of damp. This does look similar to, to what we are looking at. It yeah. looks much more moldy. The stone house we're looking at is not moldy. But my question is, how do you fix this kind of mold? Especially when you want to show the beautiful walls, but look like one area. This area right here mm. is completely green of mold. And, but, and but like that would what? just scare me, like to the point of I will have I won't have anything to do with it. <laughs> but look, there is an old uh, fireplace. I love that fireplace. And you that is something you just have to have. maintain. Yeah. Uh, I hope he does. And the downstairs was pretty much the same. The floor was basically just ground and mud, which needed cleared. Oh, there's a fireplace here as well. Wow. Beautiful. Look at this. Look at the wood. Is that wood? I think it looks like, oh, maybe it's stone, stone. that was burned. Yeah, yeah, but I like that feature. It's yeah. very cool. I don't think you have chimneys made out of wood. No, of course, that would be. The big sliding door would need to go and the stair would be taken out as well. So in short, there was a lot of foundational work needing to be done before I was at the stage of picking out my curtains. After taking out the staircase, the builder began planning the layout. So you have what looks like a window here mm -hmm. and a small window here. That's free light you could get in. Yeah. But he already have it uh, lined up for the shower. Shower and the sink. Uh, so it seems like he wants to really divide this already very small stone house into small rooms. Yeah, but I guess this is also where people are entering the house. So if he's planning on living there full time, mm -hmm. when people are coming over, you don't want them to walk into your bedroom. But you also don't want to design the floor plan based on the few times you have guests. The walls and the old fireplaces got filled in and repaired with brick and cement. Oh, he, he, he filled, filled in the, the power place. Similar work was done upstairs in regards to sorting out the health of the internal walls. The ceiling was also raised a little bit and this ended up opening up the space way more. I like that he raised the ceiling. Yeah. That was a great idea. The floor downstairs was sorted out with concrete and after this, the insulation started getting put in. There goes the stone walls. I feel that when we, if we were doing a, a stone house, the whole point of renovating a stone house would be to maintain the stone house features. But there is a huge difference between a stone house in a tropical island and a stone house in Scotland where it rains 300 days but ago. But don't you think it was just because it was an abandoned uh, shed? That it was so like no i i think yeah that could be a part of it but i think this saves him a ton of money on electricity mm. bills the next part of the project was actually a bit of a pain in the hole which is a scientific expression so here we have an example of what i think is going to happen to almost everybody when they do these kind of projects you have 
a quote from a company and then all of a sudden the same company finds out that there is a surprise that needs to be fixed and mm. it's going to be super expensive. When the builder went up and inspected the roof, he found out that it wasn't very good at all. And because of this, I had to pay a fair few unexpected stacks for the scaffolding and the repair work that followed. But he's not changing the roof. Which I think is so nice because that's what makes it so pretty. Even if you want to change the roof, if you, you should find tiles that matches the mm. old style. I do see the, the windows. He put in ceiling mm. windows. I like that. Look how nice that area is. So it's beautiful. beautiful. Part of this process involved getting the stonework repointed, which in the end brought a lot of life back into the building. Oh. Okay, so... Windows. Yeah. It's the first thing I see. I think it looks very cute from the outside with these two frames, but the stones in between the windows are just not the same stones as... It's interesting that he found uh, similar stones to, to the bottom. I'm wondering But if not you... between... I would have liked to see that whole... Uh, like everything being used with the same stones. Back inside, things were really starting to take shape at this point. The roof windows were installed, which brought in a lot of natural light. The first wiring had been completed by the electrician, and the frame for the bedroom was also all set up. I would just have it as one big open uh, room. Even the toilet and the bathroom? I'm sure there are neighbors you can go to. <laughs> no, but you know, it's it's such a small room that I just feel that but you can't put up walls. I think you can. I think it's practical. The insulation was almost fully done downstairs and upstairs, so it was beginning to feel more and more like a proper house with every day that passed. Like I said before, this did make it feel a bit more homely. It was also much more quiet and there weren't any drafts blowing through anymore. With the majority of the insulation done, the joiner was able to fit the plasterboard throughout and block off the rooms downstairs, which made the place look much cleaner. I mean, if, if you have a couple of friends who could help you do this, you could do it. I don't think this is very expensive in materials. I don't know, but I'm just, this is far from 150,000 euros. <laughs> yeah, it's also very different material choices. Yeah, 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 but know? that's the point, you know. I, I'd like to know how much he actually spent on renovating this stone house. Okay, Amelia, I found out how much his whole project cost. At the same time though, the bare plasterboard did make the bedroom space feel a bit like a prison cell, but thankfully that didn't last too long. Once I got the sash and case windows put in, it just completely transformed the place. Nice windows. Very nice windows. I wonder if uh, the stone here between the, the frames if they will resemble yeah. the other stones with time. But I love the windows. I wonder what it would have looked if they were black. The stonework was also completely done outside now as well. And I had a new black drain pipe put in, which really classed up the joint. After this, I had a new bespoke hardwood oak staircase, that's quite hard to say, installed, which I kept covered with carpet just to avoid it getting scratched with all of the workmen that were coming and going. I had some of the bathroom parts fitted and had a taper come in to sort the joints on the plasterboard so that it was prepared for the painting. This guy has more of a modern style, mm -hmm. I think. I think this is also a cheaper type of design. Mm. Like you, you can go to any department store, whatever they're called, like a building uh, store. What do you call it? Um... Yeah, everyone knows what you're talking okay. about. Okay, like a building thing. And you could pick out this to uh, an affordable price. Yeah. Then once again, heading upstairs, it was much of the same, ready to be painted and ready to get the kitchen installation started. Next up, my mum and me painted the house together. I just went with white throughout to keep it light and cheery. It's very white. I like white. White is cozy, but I mean, I would definitely, since this is like a cottage, like a stone house, I would do wallpaper, I would do this like smooshy plaster on the walls and mm. a lot of texture and colors, but I'm also a designer. This guy's not a designer. Yeah. So you but all those things it. cost money. They do. That's the problem. It's true. You wouldn't think that you're inside a stone house when you see the walls here. I also got some outdoor lights put on outside. So here's me showing them off. <laughs> He's so cute. He's so likable. Shortly after this, I had hardwood oak floors put in throughout, which again made the place look so much nicer. I love the floors. Beautiful colors and real oak. I mm -hmm. like that. From a design perspective, I don't like how these two colors are not matching. But I mean, this is like stupid small things. I think he's doing an amazing job, to be honest. I actually did lose quite a few files which showed the bathroom getting tiled and the shower getting put in. However, I do have this clip of a trespassing frog. 
Apparently frogs scream when they're scared, but I was very gentle and I put him outside in the bushes, so I'm sure he's getting on perfectly fine now, although it's actually been a few months, so realistically he's probably dead. I don't know how long frogs live. How long does frog live? The last job inside was getting the stair railing installed by a local blacksmith. You see how he made space in that corner? Before mm. it was a hole, mm. now there's space. And then the very, very final job was outside laying cobbles for the front of the house. My dad did this, and despite it being his first time ever laying cobbles, did an amazing job. See, this is more possible when you have a dad who also doesn't have 10 thumbs like me. Right, Dad? Are you watching? You should no. shut up when <laughs> your dad is when the adults speaking. speaking. And it just felt nice to go with cobbles out front because if you remember at the start of the video, the lane where my house is, is called the cobbles. I love that he's taking that extra effort to make the cobblestones. I mean... Because that makes it just makes the house more yeah. authentic. So to refresh your memory, this is what the building looked like at the very start when I initially bought it. And this is what it looks like now. I just love when the stones are clean, dry, and lit up by the sun. Oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, the 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 door. I don't personally think matches the house. I think it should have been white, but I don't. I still like it. The whole process was really interesting, enjoyable, and expensive. But overall, I'm very glad I was able to do something nice with this old building. So inside, I've got the staircase uncovered and you can see that it kind of matches the oak floor that I put in. I've got the velvet roof window right there, so you're kind of hit with natural light when you do come in. For some reason, and this is not his fault, but I hate these kind of plugs. Switches are just notoriously ugly. We stayed in a place in South Africa. They had the most beautiful switches. I don't know, this is such a stupid thing to mention, but it's just, for some reason, no, it's, it's grinding my gear every time I see it. And under the stairs, made use of the space and changed it into storage. This is my jam. I love hidden storage. In here, got the bedroom that's fully done now. I've got a low down bed, just because I thought that was a better use of the space. This is very modern for a stone house, huh? And then over here, my kind of goal throughout the whole thing was to keep it simple but make use of any space I could and just kind of put in extra storage. This is a very very smart solution. And then over on the left side of the window put in some drawers. So that's where I store all of my clothes and there's the kind of natural light. There it looks like he went for a more suitable style for the house and I like that. And then in here we have my bathroom or just toilet and shower. Is it a bathroom if you don't actually have a bath? So I've got the grey tiles and just kind of went with a simple grey, kind of bluish and white look. Um, I'm not going to do much else with this. Got the mirror and the frosted glass window so people can't perv on me. This is a smart way to have storage and heat your towels. Yeah. So you even, you heat, you heat the room, the towels and you can store your yeah. I, I like I don't think they're pretty but they're very practical and then up the stairs we've got the bit of art on the wall there again the natural light coming in and a bit of recessed storage space which used to be a window way back in the day but I changed it into a little bookshelf I love this I've got the rail in here which I think like I said works well with the wood it's very high this and railing that's what I when I saw it. And then over here. This is like more it's in like style, a... old, older style. He, he, he had a smart idea with the storage here, I think. So this is me. I probably should have worn jeans or something more presentable. But there's all the storage up above. There's the fridge there. There's the wash machine built in and a little spice rack. But I don't have that many spices, so I just use it to store all of my utensils. I made a little kind of breakfast bar, and here's the kind of living area where I sit. I love that he made a seating unit yeah. in this window. This looks like you're inside a stone house when you see this right here. Yeah. That, that's one of my favorite parts of the house so far. I saw this hole in the wall in the beginning, and I don't understand why he's not using it for decor pieces and books and stuff mm, to yeah. make it look cute. I'm not very sure about the rug. The rug is beautiful. And the table. Table. I'm not sure. You know, if this was our stone house, dump the TV. Or if you want a TV, you should hang it somewhere. Yeah. But it, this used to have a fireplace. I want the fireplace. And I've got a grey sofa from Sophology. And this is the view 
out over my neighbor's garden and it also looks up to the hill that overlooks my village. Well, it's not my village, it's just the village. And then over here, we've got my desk where I make all of my clickbait, like I said. I love this guy. He actually did a box for all his wires yeah. so that you don't have wires laying around collecting dust. Mm. And I actually just realized that I never pulled off the film. And this is what it looks like at night. I've got the kind of under cabinet lighting using the Philips Hue light strip. So let me know what you think. Let me know if I should change anything. Let me know if I've made any horrible interior decoration decisions. And that's pretty much it. I think we did give him some views on his interior. Yeah. But I think this guy did a great job. And clearly most people think so because this video has how many views? 17 million. <laughs> He definitely earned enough ad revenue to buy and renovate this stone house, which is quite interesting. That's amazing. Um, but I don't know how much he spent on this stone house. A guesstimate would be something around 30 to 40,000 euros. I think it's more. I think it's like 50. Really? Yeah. Okay, Amelia, I found out how much his whole project cost. How much? Guess. So overall, it costs £157,844.46. So 120,000 euros. That's a lot of money. And we thought it was budget. Go watch our tiny house video if you haven't seen it. Yeah, 